Cool. All right. So I'm Keith Rarick, uh, and I want to talk a little bit about Go dependencies, um, tooling, dependency management, and a tool that I've been working on called GoDep. Um, first of all, if I, I assume that most people here have sort of been wondering about this issue for a while because it's it's a popular, common topic of conversation. Um, but just to like give a little bit of background, this is this is sort of the, the problem as I tend to think about it. Um, well, for, first of all, when, when a lot of people talk about Go dependency management, there's an assumption that there's a problem um, because a lot of people complain about the fact that, well, the Go tool, when you type Go get, it just downloads whatever is on the, the, the tip of master branch of all the dependencies for, for the package that you're in um, and just goes ahead and tries to compile it with whatever's there. Um, for, for a lot of projects, that's fine. Um, if you're, you know, if, if it's a new project, if it's a hobby, if you're just getting started, or even if it's a serious production code and you're just only using the standard library, which a surprising number of, of packages that I'm involved with don't even have any external dependencies, um, you don't need any other tools other than the, the plain Go tool. Um, I know that, like, for, for my speaking personally, Maybe not so much in terms of like total hours spent or lines of code, but, but just in terms of like the number of projects I'm working on. Most of my projects actually don't need anything but the Go tool. Um, but occasionally you really do need something else. Uh, and that's because when you've got other dependencies, sometimes that other package, they'll change their, their API and it'll just break. Or somebody will decide they don't, don't want to have the project anymore and they'll delete it. Or, you know, it'll get a new maintainer or something like that. And, and it's conceptually the same project, but it has a new name now and a new import path. Um, and this, this is a real pain when you're trying to deploy to production. And, you know, you, yesterday you hit the button and you compiled your project. And then today you hit the, the same button, you haven't touched anything, and it doesn't work anymore. Um, so... A lot of people have been thinking about this problem, and you know, a lot of other languages have grappled with this too. There's, there's a list as long as my arm of, of other tools that, that address this sort of thing. Um, but a lot of these other languages are, I mean, Go is, Go is special. Uh, there's, I mean, first of all, the, the Go tool itself does a lot of the, the same kind of heavy lifting, the, just fetching stuff from the network, uh, finding packages in your local file system. That's a lot of that stuff is is things that things like Bundler and Lion Engine and these other tools, they they do that because the languages that they were developed for don't don't na naturally have already have tools that to work on that stuff. Um, so in addition to like what are the dependencies, they're also fetching things over the network, etc. Um, and and plus you know with, with Go with with things like GoFund, it's a lot easier to do machine translation of source code. You can rewrite. Um, parts of your, you know, import paths. You can you can do all kinds of fun stuff. That's a lot a lot uglier if, if it's even possible in other languages. So, I think the potential is there to do better in Go than than what we might see with, with these other languages. Um, and of course, a lot of people have felt the, the same way. There's there's literally a lot tons of of people who've worked on this problem for Go itself. I mean, all, I'm not going to list all of these out, but y you can see. Um, um, so, you know, I took a look at this and I thought, yeah, this is, this is great. I, I agree that it's a problem. And, you know, like, a lot of the, there's some really good ideas in a lot of these tools uh, that are out there. But, man, this is just a mess, you know? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great if there was just, like, one really good one and then everyone could use that tool? So of course, <laughs> so of course, the, the natural solution is to write another Go dependency tool, um, which which I did. Um, I actually so so hence the birth of GoDep. Um, in in my defense, when I started working on this, there weren't as many other tools already out there. Um, but and 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 another thing is that I I think that I, I looked around because I thought you know I I really don't want to write this so I don't have to. Um, but I didn't see anything that had an approach that was even remotely similar to what I wanted out of a tool. Um, most of the ones that I saw were, 
basically clones of Bundler or uh, in, that, in that vein. Um, I decided to include a screenshot because I think my, uh, this talk has too much text and not enough pictures, so here's a picture of some text. <laughs> All right, so, so there's this thing called GoDep. Um, and let me be very clear about what I, what I want it to do and what I actually really don't want it to do. Um, so the main goal of GoDep is to give you reproducible builds, to let you, like I said before, you hit the button to compile your project one day, you hit that button the next day, and you know it's going to do the same thing. Um, another goal is to, to actually keep the tool itself kind of small in the sense that I don't want you to have to learn a, a whole lot of new commands um, and I don't want to have to rebuild stuff that the Go tool already does if I can avoid it. Um, and along those same lines, I want to try and keep a smooth workflow you know, in your day-to-day -day programming and when you're running Go build and Go test over and over again. Um, I don't want to interrupt that workflow with a bunch of extra steps to, to, to deal with dependencies. Um, so keep that min to a minimum. Um, another, another small goal along, along those lines is, you know, if you've got a new person joining your project, you've already got a code base that has all these dependencies, it's nice if it's, if it's as easy as possible for a new person to get up to speed. Um, goodness knows, like, w one of the most painful aspects of software development is just getting all of the, like, ridiculous you know, crap loads of tools installed on a new system just before you can even write Hello World. Um, so I'm trying to avoid contributing to that problem. Um, and then what, one more bonus goal, and this is more of like a side effect, but I also maintain the, the Heroku build pack for Go. And the Heroku build pack has, has a little bit of trouble with plain, bare Go project repositories because it has almost but not quite enough information to just compile everything automatically. Um, the main thing that it needs is it needs to know the name of your package. If you've got multiple packages in, inside of a single repo, um, I won't go into all, like, talk to me about it later if you're interested. It's, it's, it's just it's this little annoying problem, and I know that if you had a tool that, you know, GoDep is one example, but basically any Go dependency tool that, that leaves some sort of a manifest or, or a list of metadata in the repository, there's an opportunity there for it to just include just that little extra bit of information. Um, and as a side effect, the, the Heroku build pack um, can be a lot faster and a lot more seamless. Um, anyway, so anti-goals of this, of this tool. Uh, things that, it's not just I'm not trying to do, I really don't want to do these things. Um, I want to avoid doing them. One is, uh, I don't want to add another level of indirection. Um, sometimes when people talk about the problem of, like if you've got some, some package that you're using and it gets a new maintainer and, or that somebody like moves it to Google code or something, um, and now if you've got a new import path, a common reaction is, oh, well, you know, if we could just make this centralized repository of names and everyone can just grab a name and then the name would point to the real import path and the tool would you know, go and look up in this central repo of names where to get the code from, it could solve that problem. Um, I mean, yes, every problem in computer science can be solved by adding another level of indirection, except for the problem of too many levels of indirection. Um, but basically, uh, this is just uh, an, this is one, I, I view that really as a separate problem. And the specific problem of having a, having a project that, that, that moves to another location, you can tease that apart and, and view it as a couple of smaller problems. Um, first of all, if you don't actually need to, to update or, or get new code from that, from that package, if you've already got a local copy of it somewhere, you don't need to do anything. Um, it's only an issue when you want to get an update, and then suddenly you can't get updates anymore. And then you need to worry about the, what the new name is. Um, and yeah, so maybe there's a little more manual work there. Um, but it saves, you the, it saves the community the cost of running and maintaining this centralized service. Um, so I already talked about having a central repo. Um, uh, another goal, another thing I really want to avoid is, is parsing version strings. I think that's just madness. Um, 
you know, whether, whether you try and solve it by, you know, just by fiat saying like this is the format and anyone who doesn't obey this format doesn't, doesn't get supported or you have just a, a, a list of ugly heuristics to try and figure out what the version string means. Um, fortunately, it's not necessary, so just don't do it. Um, and along with that goes things like fancy constraints, like, oh, I, I want this package and I want a version anywhere between you know, 1.2.8 and 1.2.12. Um, anything in between those two is okay. Um, it sounds nice, but this is one of those things where choosing what, if, if you care enough and if your project is important enough to you that, that you're worrying about this problem, it's worth the attention to choose the exact version of whichever dependencies you want. And you don't have to do it very often. You're not constantly updating your dependencies. Um, so it's, it's worth the time to just pay attention and, and figure out what really works. And what you save in return for that is an awful lot of complexity in, in the tooling. Um, and you can have a lot more confidence in the tool because the tool is simpler and you really know what it does as opposed to just running a bunch of commands and by rote and just assuming that it's going to do something useful. Okay, so uh, enough, enough gen generalizations. Here's, here's, the, here's how GoDev itself actually works. Um, the first thing is just write down what the dependencies are. Just make a, it just makes a list of assuming that you've already started developing your project and you've got it compiling and you've got it working because you started out with just go dev or just the go tool, just go get and everything compiles and it tests and, it, and it's all working fine. Okay, now that it works, write down what all the dependencies are and what version. Uh, and specifically I mean which git commit ID or mercurial commit ID um, goes with each dependency. And that is, that's really it. That's all you, strictly speaking, all you need in order to be able to recreate that, um, that build environment. Unless, of course, one of those packages really disappears and you don't have the source code anymore. Um, so another principle is go ahead and vendor all the source code. Just copy all the source code into your repository and check it in. Uh, it took me a while to sort of come around to this, but the more I've worked on GoDev and used it in projects, that the more I'm really sold on this. It's everything else, the, the mechanisms underneath get so much simpler. And again, you don't have to worry about things like the source code just vanishing one day when you're trying to, to do a new build from scratch. Um, and it's also faster uh, on average. You know, when you're, when you're on a new, new machine, you just clone your, your one repo for the project that you're working on and you type, Go dev, go build, and it just builds. Uh, it's very nice. Um, and and the last thing is do this dependency I, dependency resolution only at the top level of the dependency tree. In other words, in package main, when you're when you're really building the, the program that you're going to use, that's when you need to figure out what all the dependencies are. Um, one way of thinking about it is that, that, that what this tool does, it's all for the benefit of the linker. Um, so if you're maintaining a library, you don't need to specify the dependencies of your library. Because really, you along with those dependencies are just dependencies of someone else's main package. And they're the ones who are going to be worrying about exactly what version of which dependency you use. Um, so as a library maintainer, you basically do nothing. Um, and all of the work happens at the top level of the dependency tree. And yeah, and so, so, and then when it comes time to actually like do something, like run tests or build your project, <coughs> leverage the Go tool as much as possible. In fact, just run the Go tool, um, but give it a modified Go path where we've got all of these, all the dependency code already set up. Uh, and that's, that's how it works. Okay, so. Let's, let's, let's take a look at an example here. One or two commands to show you like a typical like session of, of what it might be like to use GoDev in a, in a, in a project. 
Um, this is definitely not complete or anything like that. Um, but as an example, I've, I've taken HK, which is uh, a new command line interface for Heroku that, that those guys are working on. Um, and so let's say that I'm an HK developer and I just copy, I just clone this repo and I want to I wanna start using it. So if I weren't using GoDep, I'd just type something like go test um, to run tests in all, in all the packages, but it doesn't work because I don't have any of the dependencies installed. As you can see, there's a bunch of stuff that's missing. Um, now I could type go get dot slash dot 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 and it would go out and fetch code for all of those things. Um, but again, I wanna, in this case, I wanna really make sure that I'm using the right version of everything. And since HK already uses GoDep, what I'll do instead is I'll type GoDep go test and it, it just runs. Um, so one of the nice things about this is that the, the mechanism for this piece of GoDep is, is very simple. Uh, in fact, uh, there's just a handful of commands and, and one of those commands is go. The go subcommand of GoDep, all it does is it sets up the go path, it, it takes your existing go path and it adds a little bit to it and then it just runs the go tool. In fact, um, I can type GoDep path to see what, what it would do. This is the this is the extra stuff. It's in this directory for HK. And when I do go dev go, it's exactly equivalent to, um, almost exactly equivalent to to this. It really just takes that, the output of that command, tacks it on the beginning of your go path and, and runs it. The, the, the main difference between what I just typed and GoDep itself is, other than it's more convenient the other way, is that it does a couple of extra checks to make sure that you've actually accounted for all the dependencies and the code is actually there. Um, if you just ran this blindly, it, it could be that, that it was out of sync and you wouldn't get what you were expecting. GoDep does a little bit more work to make sure that you're actually getting the right thing. Um, okay, I just want to do one more thing and that is to show an example of what happens if I want to add a new dependency to this project? Let's say, um, oh, actually before that. Okay, so, so this is great. You can type go dev go test and go dev go install, et cetera. But that's a little bit annoying, um, especially when you're doing lots of commands. So there's another command, um, go dev restore, that just goes through the list of dependencies that's, that's in that file in your project and go through to each one and check out the version that's been listed. Um, and this is slow because it's downloading a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but basically the idea here is once you've run this, now you've got all the, all the right versions of everything in your real go path and then you can just run the go tool directly. Um, you just have to remember that if you go and change something outside, you know, you, if you happen to go get a new version of something or if you type go restore in another project somewhere, just mentally keep track of that. Like yeah, well this is taking a while so I'll just, I'll just skip that. Um, the, other, the only other thing that I wanted to show was to add a new dependency or it, it's mostly just when you're adding a new dependency. It, you just add it like you normally would. You you'd put a new line in, this, in the source code You'd make sure everything compiles properly. And when you're ready to check it in, you type go dev save. And then it'll just re-record the list of all the dependencies in the same place that it, that it normally is, which is, um, actually I should show this. There's a directory called go depths, And inside of there is a JSON file. And it just has a list of all the dependencies and the version of each one and a, a couple of other tiny things in there. Okay, so that's how that works. So what's left to do? Uh, first of all, GoDep is ready to use right now. It, it works great. Um, people are using it uh, on a number of projects um, in production. Um, and it's, it saved me a bunch of work and it's 
I think saved some of my coworkers a bunch of work. Um, but there's still a couple of things left to do. One is to, to generalize it. it. For the most part, assuming that you're using the, a standard Go workspace uh, for our, you know, the, the standard conven Go conventions for laying out your source code, um, GoDev doesn't really make assumptions, tries not to make assumptions beyond that about how things are structured. So it should work on just about any Go project. Um, but there are still a couple of situations where, it, where I've either made a mistake there or there's still an assumption in there, and I want to try and get rid of those so that it's, it's really as general as, as it should reasonably be expected to be. Um, there's still a few bugs, of course, um, that need to be fixed. And just uh, one or two features, I think, that really, really uh, are obviously missing, um, but it's very close to what I consider complete. Like, it really doesn't, I don't want it to be this growing, you know, huge project that, that continues to agglomerate more and more functionality. It's, it's basically finished, except for the ongoing maintenance work. It, it shouldn't really grow. So if you, wanna, if you wanna help out, that would be, of course, most welcome. Um, there's the URL up there. Um, and that's about all I have.